of glass, shards of stone, hiding fate of designs neath the surface. Newcastle is our favourite city in this country. Um, the people are warm, friendly, helpful. People up here are fantastic. Um, I'm just in the expectancy tonight that I think we've got a wonderful audience, a wonderful band, and it's going to be a brilliant night. Um, Grant introduced me to Big Big Train on a journey home from Edinburgh one night, and he tends to play a lot of prog music in the car. Uh, and the Big Big Train was one that he introduced me to and when I heard them, I immediately liked them. The thing that got me into Big Big Train was the sound. I was, at the time, I had just discovered Prague Magazine and they were included on the CD that came with the magazine. I think it was an excerpt of uh, Experimental Gentleman and I heard enough that made me want to go and buy the album and I couldn't pass up the chance to join in with their first tour. I was a fan of Spock's Beard when uh, I found out that there was a new drummer in Big Big Train that looked very familiar to the drummer that was in Spock's Beard. It sort of sparked my interest. So uh, yeah, checked it out and uh, that was English Electric part one and I was on board from them. For me, it was, um, it was a, uh, a sampler uh, from uh, a friend of mine who was also into prog, and this was back in the early 2000s, and uh, and he gave me this uh, this sampler of uh, of music, including a track from uh, Big Big Train from the the Gathering Speed album, and I thought this was just something that was really cool, just a great piece of music, and I I went out, bought the album, and uh, I've been a fan ever since. Um, believe it or not, through um, that well-known online shopping uh, Amazon, I was looking through for something, and I. Um, I saw the cover of a transatlantic box, it was Kaleidoscope, it came out in 2013 I think and I bought one and then at the bottom there were, there's this thing that says if you like this, you'll like this lot um, and this lot were Big Big Train, it was um, the English Electric albums had just come out um, and they were available on vinyl so I, I thought I was in there. Um, I didn't realise I liked Prague until I met Tony, but obviously, um, yeah, my interest has grown since Tony and I got together. Look, I, c I can't go past that that first hearing of Summer's Lease on the on the um, sampler CD because without that, um, chances are I might never have mm. have come across the band. So it's uh, it's just one of those chance things that happen in life. And um, and I seem to remember it was through Peter Jones's podcast, the the Tales from the Tiger Moth. And it just caught me. I, I've always loved the, the banjo sort of ukulele sound. And when it opened it, I was, I remember I was actually, that being too much information, I was actually in the bath with the with this playing. And I sat bolt up like almost a eureka moment. And I was like, what the heck is this? This is fantastic. Uh, I'm, and my wife is really into the countryside and wildlife. She has a horse and she loves all this. So I went down immediately and played, listen to this. This is like, this is like you in a song. This is, you Googled what is the best Big Big Train album and they immediately came up because English Electric had come out. So I, I went and got that straight away and just fell, absolutely fell in love with, with, with all of that, absolutely, straight away. It was love at, love at first here. I spotted them in Prog Magazine and um, there was an, a small box out about this, this interesting new group. they just released English Electric um, it wasn't even English Electric 1 at that stage and, and I could see Dave Gregory and I thought this could be quite interesting. I mean the first thing I heard was um, Andy had the video of the Real World Studios um, when they did that one, that, that concert and Andy said listen to this group and he put it on and I just sat there and I thought where are these, where have they come from? This is, this is just amazing. Okay for me was 2012 with uh, English Electric. Interestingly, uh, I met Nellie Pitts uh, on the merch stall selling big, big trained beer t-shirts. Prog Rock Festival called Summer's End, where they had big, big trained beer on sale, which was a sort of slightly chocolatey flavoured dark beer. 
Um, and at the time, I was just beginning to organise a beer and sausage festival in my local community. So the idea of having a big, big trained beer ticked a couple of the uh, interest levels for me. And in fact, we did have big, big trained beer on the following year. And I came into Big Big Drain in his living room a few years ago. He played a DVD. It was the rebreather. And that impressed me very much. I think it must be around about 2010, 2011, just after I met Martin and I was getting my, my, prog, my prog act back together again. And he said, have you heard this band Big Big Train because they're doing a song about your home city and Winchester Diver. So of course I listened to it because I knew the story about William Walker sort of saving, the, saving the cathedral from, from actually sinking into the ground. So I listened to it and I thought, wow, this is, this is stupendous. This is really quite something. And they gave me a, a kind of um, a preview copy of um, English Electric One. And I drove home and two things happened on the way home. And I was listening to it. I got lost and I burst into tears. And that, that just sealed the deal for me, especially Winchester from St Giles Hill because Winchester is where I was living at the time, is still my spiritual home. And I've never heard a song which so beautifully encapsulates a place as that one does. Back in 91, 92, whatever it was, I remember getting a flyer advertising a new uh, album by a band on their label, Giant Electric P, called Big Big Train, Goodbye to the Age of Steam, and I just bought it out of interest and uh, kind of liked it well enough to carry on buying Big Big Train releases when they came out. I came across Big Big Train round about the time of Underfall Yard. Um, Prog Magazine was the thing that, that put me onto it. They, uh, the band had a track on the uh, Prog Magazine cover disc. And there have only been three or four tracks that have really hit me um, such that I would shell out cash. Uh, I think it was Kingmaker was on the sampler. And then, um, so I was, I was immediately fascinated. I bought the album and then got in touch with the band and said, look, I've got a, a relatively new label, uh, record label, and your albums aren't coming out on vinyl. I think they should. Are you interested? Now, at the time, they were on Giant Electric P, and Giant Electric P, I think, not... I, th I think they'd had a couple of problems with, a, with releasing some vinyl. They'd had struggled with test pressings and stuff. And so English Electric Part One was the first album that we put out on vinyl. So we got contacted by Chris... I wasn't, I, wasn't, I wasn't particularly aware of the vinyl revival that was happening amongst the hip to, hipsters and artisans of the world. And obviously the vinyl revival has happened and is you know, full steam ahead. Um, and yeah, we, we initially, I think Chris, we didn't know him for the end of the yard, but he asked to put out English Electric Parts 1 and 2 as a limited and we, it ended up doing well for us and in fact we've you know we've we, we now whenever we're making an album vinyl is almost the first thing we're thinking of as opposed to cd or something they're in parallel so yeah and chris is great and the nice thing chris is a vinyl nerd and so therefore you know we we've got someone that that really cares about good pressings and heavyweight vinyl and all that stuff i have a a, a prog project called tiger moth tales uh, which started out as an experiment, really, because I had been in the music biz for, oh, about 15 years or so. More of an ex as an experiment than anything else, I started to write this, this album uh, called Cocoon, uh, which I suppose is thanks in, in part to, to bands, certainly, certainly bands like Big Big Train and 
other uh, people like Frost because I, I I had no I had no idea up until about 2011 that modern prog was still a thing, and so my friend played me this song by Big Big Train, and that got me into to them um, into the Under Four Yard album. And it was sort of partly through th things like that that I started to listen to more modern prog and think, you know, that there's a, obviously some kind of market for this and or some kind of niche. But really, I wrote Cocoon sort of being inspired by some of this stuff and, and inspired to write my own. Rob Reed picked up on it from um, Magenta, who has his own record label, and th that's kind of how it all got started for me with uh, Tiger Moth Tales. So, um, and that's that's led on to so many other things. You know, very surprising, and uh, and I you know feel very lucky for everything that's happened since. <laughs> David Longdon was at my first acoustic gig as Tiger Moth Tales, but he also came to my first full band gig in Nottingham because that's where he that's where he lives, and he heard that we were doing the full uh, the first debut um, full band gig, and he, he came along to that, which I didn't know he was going to do until the night he just sort of Facebook uh, gave me a, a message on Facebook saying, oh, I'll see you at the gig tonight. So that was a massive surprise. So I was very touched that he, he did that. So, so that's sort of the power of Facebook. So I joined the Big Big Train Facebook group and there was, back in those days, it wasn't quite so large as it is now, but there was a strong community feel to it. And uh, after the release of the English Electric albums, Alison Ryman is as she now is, who was one of the other prominent members of the group, suggested this weekend get together in Winchester, which, as I'm sure people know, is the source of some of the uh, Big Be Train songs. So a bunch of us descended on Winchester for the weekend and had this fantastic weekend of sightseeing and meeting the band and having dinner together and visiting um, Rob Aldrey Studios. And it was the complete opposite of the never meet your heroes kind of cliche that yeah we got to spend time with the band and discovered how, what nice people they were. And Tobber and I met in 2013. 2013. The 14th of September. Oh, I didn't know no, to that, darling. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> so wedding day. So it was, it was on the uh, big big weekend that uh, Alison Raymond organised in Winchester. Um, and a whole group of us, about 15, wasn't it, met up in Winchester at the station. Um, we're very stunned that um, Greg Spalton and Andy Poole and Rachel Hall all wandered up. Said um, hello. <laughs> said hello yeah. and walked us around Winchester, showing us some of the sights. And yeah, we followed the lyrics of the song Winchester from St. Giles Hill yeah. and uh, ended up, the proper guided walk ended up on the viewpoint up on St. Giles yeah. Hill in quite close to everything in Winchester. We, we could see how the town was laid out as depicted in the lyrics. Big Big Train Facebook group was sort of in its, in its infancy. You know, it's a fledgling group around about 2012, uh, 12, 2013 when English Electric One came out. And um, I just had a eureka mo moment because knowing that I loved Winchester from St Giles Hill so much, I thought, what about organising a big, big weekend in Winchester? Um, and because I knew Winchester quite well. I, it was a question of just taking people around to show them all the places mentioned in the song, like Aurum's Arbor, which does actually exist in Winchester. And I just floated the idea and said, if, would anybody be interested? And I got a very, very good response. I got, got permission from Greg and the band to do this. And of course, they thought it was a fantastic idea. And Greg turned up and Greg put on his history lecturer hat and was telling us all about King Alfred Winchester Cathedral, he was there talking about the, the, the crypt. Um, Andy Paul and Rachel also came on the walk around town and it was absolutely fantastic. We had a, a quick pit stop at the pub and then we went up to the top of St Giles Hill to see the view that inspired the song. And that's where Martin took the defining photograph that we would have seen on, on the page, which made Prog Magazine, I wrote a blog about the weekend. In the evening we had a curry and Nelly joined us, Robin Armstrong joined us and Rob Rob Aubrey joined us, which was absolutely fantastic. Today and the second day, we went over to Orbit Studios where Rob and Andy talked us through the making of Judas Unrepentant. And that was absolutely very special. And they just won the Limelight Award from Prog Magazine. So that was there and on show. And also they gave us a preview of Make Some Noise. So all in all, it was a fantastic weekend. It became a gathering of people. I ended up as a kind of Winchester tour guide um, by, by accident on the day. Um, 
and so I, you know, as I was doing it, I was thinking, actually, I quite enjoy this. I might, you know, maybe in an, an alternative life, I'll become a tour guide of Winchester or something. Um, so we just took a bunch of listeners round and I talked them through uh, the history of the city and the connection with the band and we just had a great time, you know, we went for a drink and stuff like that. Um, and it was nice, it was lovely, it was quite intimate, uh, but, it, but those people then go away and talk a bit more about, you know, about the band. Um, and then more people become interested and then we did... Um, we followed that up subsequently a couple of times. So we did an album launch at Real World Studios for people. I can't remember what the album was now, but we did an album launch there. And when we did the folklore video, we invited um, fans to be a part of that as well. It's nice to it, it's nice to have that close connection with listeners. Um, it's nice to involve people. They enjoy it. Everybody wins, really. So. So there's um, there's a song in the set list which is called Winky and it's about a uh, it's about a pigeon that saves yes. the lives of some aircrew when it's released when their bomb has gone down. Spike, who I believe is under there, is um, stood behind so. David Still. London at Halifax for yeah. a remarkably long period of time before we're all running around with the cameras trying to trying to get a line on it. Yes. And then, then finally, finally yeah. David turns around. Yeah. And it was standing. I didn't see the look on his face because yeah. he turned around the opposite direction from me. Pointed. Look, Dave. Oh, oh my God, now I've seen everything. <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny.